Forests are some of the most biodiverse ecosystems. Because of the large number of available niches, they're home to about 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. Forests do more than just provide habitat to so many living things. Forests also provide valuable ecosystem services. Forests provide us with lumber that we use to, well, build our civilization with. Forests regulate runoff and act as natural filters for water, maintaining the health of aquatic ecosystems. We also use forests to provide us with fuel. If you've ever had a campfire or cooked using charcoal, you have used forest-provided biomass fuel. Forests also provide us with recreational opportunities like hiking or mountain biking. Forests act as a carbon sink. The photosynthesis of all the plants in forests absorb about 20% of U.S. carbon emissions every year. <sighs> a pet peeve of mine is when people cite forests as producing oxygen. Now don't get me wrong, all photosynthesis results in oxygen production, but forests are not a major source of the oxygen you and I breathe. About 75% of all the oxygen you breathe comes from aquatic ecosystems, especially the ocean with all the photosynthesis of phytoplankton and algae like kelp. Forests produce oxygen, but because of all the animal life that forests support, not much of that oxygen actually ends up being what you breathe. That's just about all ocean. The Amazon rainforest, for example, is commonly referred to as the lungs of the planet. The Amazon rainforest does produce about 20% of all oxygen in the world. And the animals there use 20% of all the world's oxygen. Nobody cares that forests produce oxygen. We care that they sequester carbon, they absorb carbon from the atmosphere. But let's go back to the ecosystem services, especially the lumber. The wood sourced from forests is technically considered renewable, but only if it's done sustainably and we plant as many well, or more trees than we remove. But we don't. We're losing 18.7 million acres of forest per year. That's the equivalent of 27 soccer fields every minute. Since humans have begun using forests as a source of wood, we've lost about 46% of all trees. One of the reasons that we've lost so many trees is because of a logging strategy called clear cutting, where all trees in an area are uniformly just cut down. While this is economically advantageous and the most affordable method of logging, it leads to soil erosion, increased soil temperature, increased stream temperatures, and flooding. The temperature regulation is probably one of the more important ones. See, many organisms that live in forests or in streams have an ecological tolerance to certain temperatures. So without the cooling effect from trees, both providing shade, and from the cooling of evapotranspiration, these organisms wouldn't be able to survive anywhere else. In aquatic ecosystems, this is especially important as warmer temperature waters cannot hold as much dissolved oxygen, reducing the amount of organisms that can survive in, well, streams next to forests. One type of forest that is at most risk from clear cutting are old growth forests. Old growth forests are climax communities, and the forest must be at least 140 years old to be considered old growth. But old growth forests are more than 1,000 years old, and there are trees in these forests that are also in the thousands of years old. Old growth forests have some of the largest trees, and because it's a climax community, they're predominantly saturated with hardwood trees that are, well, the highest quality lumber. As a result of the logging activity in forests, especially in old growth forests, only about 7% of the old growth forest canopy cover remains in the United States, and it's not much better elsewhere in the planet. So what can we do to make forestry more sustainable? The best way is to selectively cut certain trees to allow younger, smaller trees to grow to full size. This maintains some canopy cover and mitigates the effects of clear cutting. 
Selective cutting allows for the survival of habitat for many forest species and allows the ecosystem services of forests to continue, minimizing the effect of human activity on the forest ecosystem. This also preserves many of the supporting and regulating ecosystem services that we rely on from forests. But forests aren't only removed for lumber. Because we need more agricultural space, many forests are slashed and burned to make room for farmland. The burning of the trees there acts to distribute a lot of nutrients to the soil acting as a natural fertilizer. Slash and burn agriculture occurs predominantly in the developing world where many countries are trying to become self-sufficient, especially in terms of food resources. A lot of it also happens for palm oil production, and this is very common in rainforests where rainforests are cut down for palm oil plantations. And palm oil is in more products than you think. Like, a lot of them. Fires in general are a threat to forests. In the United States, forest fires result in about 50% of our total forest loss. Globally, the figure is about 25%. These forest fires are becoming more frequent and more severe, both as a result of increasing global temperatures, which are increasing the frequency of droughts, and because of poor forest management. See, to prevent forest fires, we've historically just suppressed fires. But that turned out to be the wrong management approach. Remember how frequent fires maintain the health and biodiversity of grasslands? Turns out that's also true of forests. Naturally occurring fires in forests provide an important service. They clear out the understory plant growth, returning those nutrients back to the soil, allowing for new growth. There are some trees, even like the longleaf pine, which require fire to germinate. The fire acts as a cue. When the cone reaches a certain temperature, it causes thousands of seeds stored within to pop out and are then spread by wind. Naturally occurring fires don't tend to damage trees. You see, the fires don't get high enough and don't burn the canopy of the trees, and the outer bark of these trees are resistant to burning. Up to a point. If fires are suppressed, it allows a buildup of the understory material. Well, all that does is provide more fuel, making a fire burn hotter and higher. After fire suppression has occurred for a long enough time, all that material will make a fire burn out of control, and the fire ends up being too hot and actually ends up damaging the trees. This results in, well, a collapse of a forest ecosystem, and then succession takes over. Today, fires are still suppressed, but controlled burns are becoming the new key to maintaining forests. A controlled burn will be prescribed in about the same frequency as a naturally occurring fire, which will remove the understory plant matter. And that does two things. It allows the natural patterns in ecosystems to persist, and it prevents any man-made fires to have less fuel, making them less damaging. Forests are some of the most important ecosystems and managing them sustainably is very important, and that's the goal of the National Forest Service. Though the results of that management is slightly questionable, considering the majority of U.S. farmland is not regulated by the National Forest Service. It's privately owned and not managed quite as well as it could be.